Hello, my name is Colo, and welcome back to another Spice and Wolf episode review. Okay, and we're back after two weeks with episode 19, the final episode of this third arc. And this episode covers the rest of volume three of the light novel. And beginning the episode, it starts right where we left off with Lawrence waiting for a time to sell and Mark explaining to Lant what Lawrence has to do for this to go right. Mark explains a little bit more to Lant and how much money Marty has right now and how much uh, he'll need. He also talks about the losses he might incur or that both of them might incur losses that you can never get back not depending on money so then we go back to lawrence and lawrence thinks about what he's done up till now to get the pyrite he has now and then luckily lawn comes to see lawrence to tell him that that somebody wants to sell some pyrite so lawrence gives lawn some pyrite and you know actually i think he's giving him um coins here and uh, Lant runs back with Lawrence saying uh, he wants it to go up even more. And on his way back, Lant thinks about what Mark told him about contracts and selling on credit and how uh, poisonous it can be for the loser or whoever um, gets the contract last. And so the price starts to um, drop with a small number of buyers and Lawrence waits for um, Lant to come back with the pyrite. But then after this, somebody starts to buy and then the price starts to go back up. And now Lawrence has to wait for um, Diana's representative to bring him more pyrite, which he's hoping for. And then uh, she appears, but she brings bad news saying that she failed the negotiations with the other party. And now uh, Lawrence starts to seem lightheaded, thinking that uh, he's already lost. And uh, Lant tries to cheer Lawrence up or stop him from giving up too soon. And Lawrence talks about having a guidepost as a merchant and that every merchant must have one. And uh, his is Holo in his case. And then Lawrence finally realizes something with uh, the feathers on Holo's head. And now with uh, Lawrence confident, he uh, felt knowing that uh, Holo would sell with him. They uh, tease each other a little bit, but uh, it seems that uh, things have turned out well. And then uh, we have the aftermath, and uh, we see the outcome of Marty's loss. Polo kind of wanted a little bit more to happen to him because of what he said to her. We still don't know what he said to her, but uh, I'm guessing, you know, I really don't know what it could be. Hmm. Something that really angered her. And now Holo asks Lawrence, does everything, does he think everything is solved? And then uh, they start going back, or Lawrence starts going back and sees where he was wrong, starting with the contract. And uh, Lawrence not trusting Holo completely with the white feathers, showing that she was the one that bought from Diana. And him thinking that Holo laid a trap for him. Polo then wants Lawrence to explain further why he thought that. And he thought that uh, Holo was completely on Marty's side. He uh, then tells her that he gets the hint now, like uh, Marty having enough stock. And what he thought about the contract, about uh, Holo signing it to make Lawrence take action. And uh, that was their first misunderstanding with Holo getting upset about Yoitz. And the uh, Holo starts to get angry or agitated, as I would say, because uh, he kind of ruined all of her efforts. Also thinking that uh, she sided with Amarty too. I think in the original, she's more animated and you can actually see, and uh, she actually shows how angry she is with her tail flaring up and her uh, standing over Lawrence. But I still like this scenery a lot. And then uh, Holo starts to talk about their bond and if Lawrence thinks it's so shallow. Lawrence wants to keep traveling with Holo, and Lawrence explains to Holo that he's only done business his entire life, and he's dumb when it comes to everything else. And after this, Holo asks the question again, what am I to you? And he says, uh, no words can describe. This stare down is uh, pretty funny, and Holo critiques this line, saying that uh, it was a little bit salty. And uh, she says she hated it in a playful manner, but 
I don't know if biting someone's hand is playful. And then after this, Lawrence asks Holo, how did, how was she able to convince Diana to sell her the pyrite? Holo tells Lawrence that uh, she actually visited Diana for a different purpose, to tell Lawrence a story that didn't exist, that Yoitz may still exist. But uh, she refused. She almost convinced her, but uh, that's when Lawrence showed up. And Holo tells Lawrence that uh, she heard his question. She also teases him with, the question. She also tells Lawrence that uh, Diana isn't human and that the feathers all over the ground are hers. And she tells Lawrence the story uh, Diana told her. Polo says that um, they should join everybody out there enjoying the festival. And uh, they take the dance away from us again. But the scenery uh, looks great. And uh, that's where this episode ends. And uh, that was a great episode. Again, uh, with the scenery, looks really good. Especially with the uh, colors here with the sunset. I like that uh, most of these scenes weren't one-to-one. -one. Like uh, this, we never got this camera angle in the um, original. I love this balcony. It was a really good decision to uh, make this scene with the um, balcony in mind. These scenes uh, feel different because um, they're not one-to-one. -one. With the characters being in different places from the um original the facial the facial expressions were um on point like here and uh the animation changes a little bit here shots like these are really good too just an overall really good episode to end an arc with but i think i'm going to end today's review here can't wait for next week's episode with volume four which is completely new to the anime with it not being adapted so uh as always tune in next week to see what happens next